60 percent. So how do you calculate the remaining 40 percent? That then when you join them together, that 40 percent and 60 percent, then you got the uh, blood volume. So this formula simply uh, helps you reach that volume. You could do this, for example, if I told you, and this is just a, uh, an example, let's say a person has six liter, six liter of plasma. That is 60 percent. So I gave you an easy example. So six liter plasma means 60 percent, and the remaining 40 percent should mean four liters. So he has 10 liter blood volume. Normally that is not the case. So if he has three liters, then instead of the remaining four, he would have two, so that is five liter blood volume. But anyways, the best way to work with this is to do this. So put the plasma, so let's say three liter, divided by one minus um, 0 0.4, that is a hematocrit, so that would come to be about five liters. So do not forget this formula. Write it down somewhere, use it. Make up various values. So say if a person has a plasma value, of volume of 4 liter, how much blood volume will he have? Because USMLE questions are going to hope that you know how to do this and do this quickly. They would give you values which are kind of easily calculatable, but you should be able to do this. So make some, do some exercises around this thing. So if a person has 6, 3 liters plasma and his hematocrit is 40 percent, then how much is the blood volume? So here is the blood volume. If a person has 6 liter plasma and his hematocrit is 35 percent, so 1 minus 0 0.35 and that would be the blood volume. So do this exercise, maybe take a little page, tag it and say that this is how to calculate the blood volume. All right, so so far what we have established is that we have various body compartments. We do not yet know why fluids stay in these compartments. Why do we have 40 percent staying here? Why not 50 here? Why not 60 percent here. Why do we have the remaining 20 percent here? Remember we are talking about the body weights, the 20 percent of the body weight. Otherwise about two-third here and one-third over here. So why do we have two-third over there and why, why do we have one-third over here? We have to talk about those. So this is now going to be the one which is going to help you on the hospital floors. Now the thing which is coming is really important. So let's go back and clean up the board a little bit. Okay. So once again, this is what we have. So the important thing to understand is what are the compositions of these compartments? And wh when we talk about the compositions of these compartments, why do we, why are we so interested in understanding the composition? The importance of the composition is that number one, these things are going to affect the patient. So for example, let's say we have sodium present in the extracellular fluid. The presence of the sodium in itself is an important factor for our homeostasis. Sodium, as you know, is very important for the functioning of our neurons. So if the sodium level goes down, we would start having neurological effects. Similarly, chloride, very important for, for other functions. Similarly, calcium, very important for… So we have to understand what are the compositions in these compartments not just for the functional part, but also to understand why the volume is maintained the way it is maintained. So all right, in our next lecture, what we will do is we will start looking at the compositions of various uh, fluids. Thank you.